Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. I'm in my workshop tonight. In fact, I've been here most of the day. It's been a cold, wet day. And I've been playing with some vintage 1980s hi-fi gear. Now, I've had enormous fun. Uh, there was an amplifier and a turntable. I've been playing old records, uh, a bit of Akka Daka. It was great. Uh, and the only thing out of the set that didn't work was this tape deck. Now, it's a Mitsubishi brand. The whole set was all Mitsubishi. Uh, good quality Japanese hi-fi gear from, I think, the early 1980s. And this has a problem. Everything else from the set worked beautifully and I've priced it all for the shop. But this one has a problem that's very typical with old cassette decks. Once they get a bit of age to them, the rubber belts that drive the deck, uh, they perish and break and stretch. So hopefully that's all that was wrong with it. I put a cassette in. In fact, I'll show you what it's doing. I put a cassette in. Uh, this one's, what have we got? Johnny Cash. And power it up. It powers up nicely. A couple of VU meters. They're really typical sort of brushed aluminium deck that was quite big in the late 70s, early 80s. And then they went to mostly black fronts. I kind of like the silver look. Uh, it's quite retro. Now, if we push play, we get a bit of a hum and then it clicks out. We'll try fast forward. Nothing, well, it clicks out again, no. So there's no, the spools aren't turning. Let's try rewind. And we'll see if you can see the action in there. Nothing's happening at all. So rewind clicks out as well. We'll do play again. I can hear it buzzing, but the tape counter's not working. So the motor to drive the mechanism that turns the tape, whether it be play, rewind, or fast forward, uh, nothing's working. So I'm assuming it's the main rubber belt from the motor. Hopefully nothing else is wrong with it because it's in good cosmetic condition and uh, look, vintage hi-fi stuff sells very well. I should have got some shots of the amp and the turntable. They're in immaculate condition and they'll be priced in the shop. Even some vintage speakers were really good. So we'll take the cover off and we'll have a look and see if we can find what's wrong. And if it is a belt, let's see if we can find one to replace it. So let's get into it and see what we can find. Oh, it's a nice clean unit in there. Okay, it's lovely and clean. No dust to speak of, no spider webs. It's um clearly hasn't been stored in a shed for a long time. It actually came out of a house. It was a deceased estate and the house hadn't been lived in for a while, but at least it didn't end up in the shed. So it all looks pretty neat. No mice been in here, which is a great sign. Now, we need to have a look at the drive. So here's the main drive motor up top here, easy to get to. And the main drive belt is a flat belt, and I can see it there. But it looks very, very saggy, really loose. I don't know if you can see that. But that belt is just hanging there. I'm not sure if it's broken, or it's just totally lost all its elasticity. Look at that. That's just obviously not going to drive anything. So clearly that's the problem. The main motor won't drive anything because that main flat belt is well just really sitting there. Uh, there's going to be other little belts in here as well, probably for the rewind and the fast forward. Obviously, if we can't get the main belt to work, nothing else is going to work. So the first thing to do is to check if we can get some belts. And I did a bit of research. And this particular model uh, wasn't listed on any of the websites I've, I've used for getting um, drive belt kits before. So I found a guy on eBay. I messaged him and he messaged back to say, no, it doesn't appear on his list either. But he said, um, we should be able to match up some belts for it. I will need to access these ones and get them out and just do some uh, measurements. And uh, that's our first plan of attack is see if we can get this mechanism out and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some belts for it. Okay I won't film all the dismantling of this um, mainly because I'm not sure how it's going to go uh, and chances are if you're doing something like this it won't be the same model anyway so it'll be basically uh, useless information to you. I am going to suggest that rather than just start taking random screws out everywhere 
look at they usually should make them reasonably accessible for belts and I'm thinking that back plate there should come off okay but I'm going to start by removing the bottom panel because that will provide much better access for the screws down there and if we look at the bottom panel it's just one flat piece with a few screws around it so general rule of thumb is start with bigger pieces rather than just taking off little brackets and unsoldering wires because it may well turn out that you didn't have to and you don't want to do excessive dismantling if you don't have to so I'll take the bottom panel off and then I'll look at getting that main mount for the that electric motor off and hopefully that will provide access for the belts so the bottom panel now should just lift away which provides pretty good access we've got the base of the main circuit board and we can see the main um, flywheel that the flat belt drives and we should be able to lift this belt up here look at that it's been twisted it's just super stretchy in fact it's almost turned into licorice so well and truly degraded uh, but that gives us a pretty good view at that mechanism we should be able to now take that main back plate off and hopefully access all the belts without too much more dismantling so I'm not sure why but there's some springs on this bracket on this plate that anchor back to another plate back in there uh, there was one on the other side, there's one at the top there, and there's one at the bottom. So, I'm disconnecting them. They unhook quite easily from this bracket, and they seem to be trapped, like, securely attached to the other end. So, that hopefully, they're not going to fall off. I have taken a couple of photos just to make sure I know where they go in case they do fall off. Um, so, that's all good. I've got the other screws out. There was one screw that held this connector tab here, so I don't have to unsolder any wires. I've just got a bracket here and one more screw at the front here and hopefully then we can just move that plate right out of the road. So I've just removed the plate, it's still connected via some wires to the motor and it provides really good access now to that main flywheel and we can see the flat belt there that's just sitting there so that should just fall off now and it's it is complete and actually to the naked eye it looks okay but it's really soft now we can just about get to that one we'll have to be careful what we take off here but it looks like that wheel will come off in fact the flow will probably have to come out and I think it might just pull out I might put the camera down to do that but you can see we didn't have to unsolder anything this other little bracket I had to take off which is a micro switch and uh, that can only go back on in the one spot with two screws, so that will be fine. Uh, I'm putting all the little screws separately because a lot of them are slightly different threads or different lengths or different um, different sizes. And some of them had a little... I don't know if we can see it here. Some of them have a little piece of like wax or, or something stuck to them. And... If we get that to focus and that means they're original they've never actually been out because manufacturers often put a little drop of like a wax but it sets very hard on the end of some of the screws uh, for warranty purposes so they they can tell if someone's been in there fiddling and if a machine comes back for a warranty repair and someone's actually had bits out they're not going to honor the warranty so it tells me that this part this has never had belts replaced before uh, so you know it's well overdue all right i think that big flywheel will come out i might just excuse my hand for a tick no i might have to do this without the camera i think it will slide out it's loose on the spindle there i've just got to be really careful that nothing drops out and i won't know where it goes these springs appear to be hanging there quite fine so i'll take another photo or two and we'll just pull the other pulleys off this belt up here it's a square section belt and it looks like it might be a bit loose as well. So we will organise to get all the belts while we've got it apart. I'll just have to take a few measurements. The large flywheel did slip straight out and it basically runs approximately there. So the flat belt goes from the little pulley on the motor around that flywheel. I'll have to measure the diameter of the flywheel and the 
uh, centre diameter of the motor pulley because it's slightly domed and also work out the exact distance between the shaft centres and then we can calculate a belt size. I will also need to measure the width of it. So that should be easy enough to do. And with the rest of it, I'm thinking this square section belt might probably be all right, but while we've got the thing apart, we really should replace it. Uh, and it's just going to be a circlip to get that pulley off there. That one's actually, well, as you can see, it's dropped out of the holder there. That's why this was loose. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, that belt, but I will replace it, as I said. Now, the rest of the um, drivetrain is all these rubber tyres. See, each of these plastic pulleys has like a rubber tyre on it. Now, I don't know how we'd go replacing those, but they all actually feel pretty good. So what I'm going to do with those is that I'll get a clean rag, and I've got some of this uh, Rubber Renew, which is uh, f uh, quite a volatile product. It's a lot of solvents, but it does really help clean ru old rubber up. And what it will do, it will... Apparently it swells the rubber a little bit and it makes all the dirt and grime easy to wipe out of it and then the rubber sort of shrinks back once the volatile chemicals have evaporated off and it, it makes it a lot softer and a lot more supple, supple and it returns the uh, rubber to a nice um, a nice grippy soft surface which was obviously is needed when these things uh, drive so there's only the one other belt, this square section belt, and this idler here actually runs against the outside of the flywheel. Uh, actually, no, it may have been this one up here, which then drives the rest of them, and they kind of drive off each other. So they will fix up fine, I reckon. There, there appears I've had a close look, and it appears to be no um, cracking or, or perishing of those tyres. Uh, so we'll just get that other square section one off. I'll do my measurements and hopefully we can get a couple of belts and we'll get a night out of here and put it back together. Okay, just finishing up tonight. I have all my dimensions for the flat belt so we can uh, order a new one of those. I've decided I'm not going to replace this. It actually feels really good. It's nice and firm and stretchy. There's no cracking. So I'm going to try the uh, rubber renew compound on that one as well. I think that will be fine. Uh, these tyres are a little bit hard, so the Rubber Renew product should really help those. And I was just looking at the way it drives. Um, this one here, actually, this tyre on this little one here, actually runs on the inside of the flywheel. So that may give us the rewind, whereas the other one is the fast forward. But anyway, that's all that is involved in the movement of the tape. So these two pulleys, this one here and this one here, have little set screws, so they'll pull off fine. This last one has a little circlip. So I'm going to take all these off, and I'll give the tyres a good wipe over with this uh, Rubber Renew product. And then all we need to do is wait for a new flat belt. So I'll pack it up for now, so that my bench is available for other projects, keeping all the screws carefully segregated. And... Uh, yeah, we'll get that belt ordered, and hopefully we'll be able to play, uh, who was it, Johnny Cash, at some stage in the near future. So I'm out in the main shed now, and I've got some protective gloves on, because this does have some fairly nasty volatile chemicals in it, and there's a lot of warnings on the back. So you certainly need to do it in a well-ventilated area, and use some protection. Um, it uh, It's supposed to renew the rubber and clean it up, and I think I mentioned before, that it swells the rubber and allows you to clean a lot of the grime off and then the volatile chemicals all evaporate and that allows the rubber to go back to its original size and basically be nice and clean and renewed. So we're going to get a little bit on a rag. I did watch a couple of other YouTube videos of guys that have tried this and they were using it on pinch rollers on reel-to-reel -reel players and they basically just rubbed around the roller for quite a bit with the wet rag. And it really did make a noticeable difference. And all the reviews and the comments I read, the people that had used it said it was actually very good stuff. So I'm going to persist, persist with this for a little bit. Um, already it's taken the, the white off and the rubber looks newer. So I'm going to rub it around for a little bit. 
I'll probably also do the pinch roller because that can be go quite hard. I was also reading that a lot of people clean pinch rollers with isopropyl alcohol, um, which apparently is quite bad for the rubber in that it dries it out and then it'll actually go hard and crack. Whereas products like this should actually rejuvenate it. So it's got a bit of a smell to it, but I'm out in a well aerated shed. So we should be right. So I'll clean this. Yeah, it's amazing. It's actually coming out well. There's a little bit of black on the cloth, which I guess is perhaps the hardened rubber. And I'll have to be careful if it does dissolve rubber, it might actually go through these gloves. So I'll have to be careful. But already that's made a substantial difference from what I can see. All right, I'll get back to you shortly. Okay, I just did those for about five to ten minutes, just ran them round and round through the rag. I do have to report that the rubber of the gloves must have been affected and it's just basically falling off so I don't think I've got very much on my fingers I'll go and wash my hands up anyway if you were doing this regularly you would need to investigate some better protection for your hands um, certainly as a once-off I don't think it's too bad and I'll go and wash my fingers up but you do need to treat these chemicals with respect but I'm really happy with how it cleaned those up they actually feel uh, very stretchy like quite firm like you would expect new belts to feel they've all got a nice even matte black color it took all any white oxidization off so yeah i think it's a great product we'll see how it works when we get it back in and we will put a little bit on the pinch roller um, carefully and just try and clean that up as well but looks like it's going to be a great product we'll see uh, the results at the end of this um, i will put a link underneath uh, for uh, this product through amazon if assuming i can find it on amazon uh, I think it's a Canadian product, so it should be on Amazon. But uh, yeah, I, it's quite a full bottle. Um, I've only used a, the minutest amount on a rag, so it's going to be very handy for a lot of jobs down the track. So just reassembling things in my uh, little room now. I did. I don't think I mentioned that I didn't actually take these pulleys off because the tyres would just stretch off them, so I didn't have to undo the set screws or the um, suit clip on the bottom one. So it's just a matter of stretching these tyres back over. Um, they look really good now. And I've got that assembly ready to go. So it's just a matter of reassembling the unit. I did try and get a little bit of a clean on the pinch roller. It's rather hard to get to. And it's probably more dismantling to get into there. I've kind of wiped it over. You can see it at the bottom there. I've wiped it over as best I can. But it actually looks pretty good. So I think we'll be right with that. We'll just get these belts on, then we can reassemble the motor plate and uh, we won't be far off playing a cassette. The assembly is going very well and very smoothly. It's always great. I say uh, regularly that you should take lots of photos and it does make it really easy to reassemble. I've made sure all the belts and tyres went on nice and square and they're sitting properly. They're not twisted or anything. Uh, I put a really small amount of lithium grease on the spindle of the flywheel where it goes through some bronze bushes. I don't think it's necessary to lubricate anything else. It all looks pretty neat and clean. So um, I think our main trouble, well, uh, clearly our main trouble was just this dodgy drive belt. Speaking of which, there's the old one. And a new one arrived in the mail recently. And it came from an eBay seller called Belt Help. And Wayne was very helpful and you do have to when you when you can't supply a belt for a specific model number you do have to look at this chart here and do some measurements and you can see that we have to measure the diameter of the two pulleys uh, the distance center to center and also note the width of the belt and Wayne was able to match one up to the specific size for me and he posted it out here it is here so uh, it looks a lot more, um, shall we say, uh, sturdy. I don't know if that's a term you can use for a belt, but it, it certainly looks much more likely to do the job than this floppy old thing. So we'll fit this on now. That's pretty well all I have to do is just loop it around the flywheel, over the pulley of the motor, assemble that plate, and then we'll just put all the screws back together, hook up our micro switch and our little electrical tab uh, and um, yeah, we're just about right to rock and roll. I have everything back together. I've left the bottom panel off and the top panel off just so that I can make sure everything's working properly. 
So we'll put a cassette in and we'll see what happens. Okay, power up. And we'll have a close look at the spools and see if we've got some turning. Whoops, hang on, that's the eject button. Where's play? There it is. Well, I think they're turning. Bit hard to tell through the camera, but look at the VU meters. So we've definitely got some music going through the thing. We'll hook it up through the amp in a minute. But that seems to be going well. I can see both those spools turning. The counter's moving. Excellent. Let's go stop. Rewind. We'll just watch the counter. That's the easiest way. Beautiful. Stop. Fast forward. Fantastic. Everything seems to be in perfectly good order. Let's have a look at the new belt in situ. And you probably won't be able to see much happening because it's uh, all very symmetrical. Oh, there you go. You can see the flywheel flickering as it goes around. New belt works perfectly. It was just slightly narrower than the old belt, but uh, that's perfectly fine. They just basically run on flat surfaces, although the pulley of the motor is slightly domed, and I guess that's just to keep it central. So there we go. Problem solved. Job fixed. Let's put the covers on now, and we'll play a little bit of Johnny Cash before we go. Okay, time for a test. Let's turn the football off. In fact, we'll flick from tuner to CD. I've put the um, RCA jacks into my new little configuration here, which makes it really easy to tap into the amplifier and speakers. And I'll put a link up for the video on when I made that. So we're all back together. We have Johnny Cash ready to go. I won't be able to play very much of it. Side one, I think the first track is called I Forgot to Remember to Forget. Mm, sounds like something I'd do. Let's hit play. It's going to take a little while to track into the song. Nothing on the VU meters yet. I to Thanks, Johnny. I think that's all we can play. But I'm really happy with that. It's a great unit. It came up beautifully. Um, it was a pretty easy repair. And what I hope to do with these videos is to encourage you guys to have a go at fixing things yourself. I'm not an electronics technician. I've only ever mucked around with electronics things as a hobby. Uh, it might surprise you to know that this is probably the first time I've ever put a belt in a cassette deck. So um, really, if you know how to use a screwdriver, if you know what a pair of pliers are, if you have a little bit of patience, and you know perhaps just research a few things if you get stuck, take lots of pictures, have a go. That's I think that's the secret. You don't have to be supremely confident. Just have a bit of a tinker and really if it fails what have you lost the thing wasn't working anyway so um, unless you go berserk with a hammer or something you're not actually going to break things just take things apart gently and you'll be fine and i'd love to hear your stories of things you fixed i have had a few people get back to me and say they've been happy to have a go at things after watching my videos and that's fantastic so what a great little unit this mitsubishi stereo cassette deck is early 1980s I can now sell it as a repaired unit with new belts, or a new belt, and the other ones are rejuvenated. Um, check out, though, if you do need to do this sort of job. I'm certainly happy to recommend this Rubber Renew, and again, I'll put a link underneath. Um, I think this is going to be a very handy product for my workshop. So there we go. We'll finish up there. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.